is the other lady um yeah in the same the next one did uh, do, do any of you have a side hustle which means you know in the last class you talked you heard about kalpit right and if you look at any of the entrepreneurs they come out of coaching class get into btech first year second year but in the first year itself they do a side hustle and you know end of first year they'll go for a big trek they will trek out to himalayas or you know to rajasthan desert not the kota coaching class huh? to the to the desert or they'll go to the jungles of chatisgarh has anybody done that uh, uh, madam do you have anything on in terms of either a side hustle which means you are doing something on the side to make a business or have you done anything in terms of tracking in the desert in the mountains in the jungles fun so the answer to your first question no uh, i don't really have anything that i'm developing as sort of a business or something and uh, the second one trekking like i've been to a few small treks like uh, in my first year i went to a trek then recently uh, during the past summer i went to a trek in uttarakhand but uh, yeah those are like small treks so done a little bit of trekking in uttarakhand okay fantastic uttarakhand trek okay super excellent okay the gentleman in yellow at the back just behind the lady yeah just behind you yeah what is the most adventurous thing you did in the last 48 hours something wild and something maverick something which nobody has done other than magga and cracking you know binge and book reading and binge watching and doing class work which is the wild thing that you have done and i'm not asking about drugs or anything huh adventurous man and when was the last time when you did something which is absolutely maverick and wild nothing naughty nothing bad but in terms of something which it doesn't do you know go deep sea diving snorkeling really go and you know five days without sleep when was the last time you did that class one class you know in school okay you don't have to answer that but guys i just want to encourage all of you to think that you know if you have to be an entrepreneurship okay again i'll repeat those school days are over coaching class is over j days are over you are into iit okay and you heard kalpit just the other day all of you heard him and if you look at any of the entrepreneurs who have graduated from this class you'll find that all of them have done either a side hustle which means they've done business on the side or they've done something which is completely maverick not just go to class and come back and do some you know some club activities like esel and abuddaya and do some event management okay so i'd encourage all of you that you know to be an entrepreneur to disrupt certain thing you have to be a maverick you have to do something which is very different so that let me and i'll show you some examples you'll see how apple encourages that so i'll, I'll do the apple case study but let's get started All right so i think the key thing again i'm repeating it every class i'll repeat it is the fact that don't launch something for which there is no market need don't launch something because you've done something in your hall in your wing your professors have told you or your customers you know your ta has told you or your friends have told you that's the easiest way to fail okay so make sure that you talk and if there's one thing that you have to take out of the class the only thing that you have to take out of the class is that be driven by your customers and if you don't talk to your customers whatever you do will become a theoretical course so that's why i keep repeating it make sure that you are iterating and you know entrepreneurship needs a lot of energy it needs a lot of different minded thinking it needs a lot of willingness to fail so you have to come out of the mindset that you know if if i fail is the end of the world it's not in business you'll fail 9 times out of 10 If you call on ten customers in business, nine customers will say no to you. You will fail with your nine customers. But as long as you get one or two customers, you'll be fine. So this basically says that you don't start with a solution. Don't try to sell your pet idea or a thesis or B Tech thesis or B Tech project. Okay? Start with a customer facing a problem that you have identified, and then you try to solve it, which I've talked in previous classes. And develop skills. Don't depend on your intellect. You don't need to be a genius. you don't need to be a j you know top 100 top 
to do business. Anybody who understands these skills, not necessarily high IQ, not necessarily my JE rank, not necessarily whether I'm CS or electrical or whatever. Okay. Not necessarily that you are in IIT or IIT Bombay. You could be in IIT, it could be NIT, it could be in St. Xavier's, it could be in Hindu College in Delhi. You could be in any college. As long as you have the skills, you will still do a great startup. So develop the skills, you know. And what will happen is if you don't have the skills and you take a job, even if you take a desk-bound job, like analytics job, you sit in front of a computer and you do a lot of analysis. Many of you will go for analytics jobs. Even then, if you have to survive, and you have to grow in that company, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, any of those analysis jobs, you still have to do all of this work. So please develop the skills other than just your tech skills. Tech skills get you into IIT. Tech skills make you in a good R&D. Tech skills make you a good professor. But tech skill will not make you a good founder. You have to develop the skills. That's on the screen. Remember, a startup is a business. Don't come here with the attitude of, I'm, you know, I listen to a lot of lectures. I'll do, you know, I'll mug up something. I'll do a PowerPoint. I'll get my CPA and then it's fine. A startup is a jargon and entrepreneurship. These are all jargons at heart. A startup is a business. You're starting a small business and therefore you have to think like business. It is also about people. Again, unfortunately, our education system now with NAP, I think it will change. But your generation, my generation, we dependent on just being the first in class or the topper and so on. But in startups and, and business, it's not how good you are. It's how good you are with people. And think different. Be, be, be a maverick. Okay. Don't only always, you know, all your life, it should not happen that when I was in school, my parents told me what to do. Teachers told me what to do. In coaching class, the, 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 the coach, coaches told me what to do. In profess, in IIT, the professor tells me what to do. That will not be able to do a startup. And you can't just Google something or YouTube something, or read up in a magazine. And listen, talk to your wingies and come back and so this is my startup. And that's why you'll find that 99% of employees also fail. They lead very average careers. Not all of them become a CEO. Not all of them becomes a star. Not all of them wins the awards. So whether you do a startup or whether you do a, a just take a job, if you develop some of these skills, you will be successful even if you take a job. Otherwise, you join as an analyst in some consulting company or some financial, you will have a good career, no doubt. Every IT Bombay person will have a good career. But you may not become the India CEO. You may not become a global CEO. You may not become a CEO of Asia Pacific. So to become a CEO, you have to think about people. You have to think different. Coming back to the course, okay, we are bang on target. We are absolutely on the dot on, um, I'm going to show you um, what the target, what our course plan was. So this is, this is on Moodle. This is the first posting on Moodle. Okay. So we first talked about customer discovery. We encourage all of you. We encourage all of you to take stock of yourselves Then create a team, find a customer problem okay, and define a customer persona. So we've talked all of that. Milin came and talked about how to make a solution. I talked about how to make a customer value proposition. Last class, 25th of August, there was a guest lecture, which was Kalpit who was like you, but he was a star in terms of entrepreneurship. Forget the fact that he was JE number one. Forget the fact that he scored 360 out of 360 in JE. And as you heard him, he's not very proud of that. What he's proud and what he wants to do is to create another version of Google, another version of Samsung, another version of Apple in India. And if you look, look at his LinkedIn post, you go and look up his LinkedIn post. He is very clear. I will not go abroad. I will not pay US taxes or France, you know, UK taxes or foreign taxes. I will build a company in India. I will hire people and I will pay taxes here and I'll generate employment. And he was sitting like you till last year. Last, this is Zoom class, right? I'm doing it to talking to you in Zoom. So I could see him in Zoom in the first year of COVID and then he did a physical class with him. Today, 29th of August, we're going to talk branding and advertising. Remember in branding and advertising, like it or not, each of you are a brand. You are a personal brand. The way you are seen, the way you are viewed, the way your customers, your wingies, your classmates, your teachers, your professors, the way you sit in class, all of them are actually part of your brand. A brand is not just a t-shirt that you're wearing. A brand is not just a fancy name, whatever fancy name you call, it, you know, and we'll talk about branding today. So if you have to develop your own brand, your personal brand, you have to go through the steps of building a brand. Today's class is about that. So let's go back to the, so we now started going from customer discovery, customer value solution and customer delivery. Okay. But if you don't do the first two steps, you'll not be able to, it's a progression. Okay. 
but it can be iterative. We talked about customer value proposition. Okay. I explained to you what is a customer value proposition. You have to start thinking about what is your own value proposition. When you go for that interview, okay, those of you going for placement, those of you want to stand, change jobs, okay, all of you want the best job. All of you want to work for Google or Apple or whichever is a, is a dream job or Goldman Sachs or Tata or Mahindra. Question is, what is a value proposition to Tata's, Mahindra's? What is your value proposition? So start thinking about your own value proposition. And trust me, there are shades of difference between IITs. And there are shades of difference between IIT Bombay, Delhi, Kanpur, etc. Or there are shades of difference between IITs, NITs, or VIT, or KEET. And there's, there's someone I know who's cracked Bain. Okay, and Bain is a ding job. But he's not here. He's in KEET. So there are shades of difference between, but still there is a difference in the overall package that candidates come across. And when you start practicing about value proposition, practice it for your startup but also practice it for yourself. Coming back to startups, if you are doing any of these, you have to be clear, not what your product is, but you know how are you better? How are you faster? How are you cheaper? Either in terms of, of performance, customization. So there are examples here, which I talked in the previous classes. And you have to be able in your startup to say, why are you better, faster, cheaper? And if you're standing in queue for a job, you have to prove to the to the recruiter. And remember, I've recruited from IMs and IITs. And most of the time I found IM people are quite good. The IM guys are trained on it. So, you know, they're more, they're better, I think, at presenting themselves. But a lot of the ITNs I interviewed struggle to explain what is the value prop? Why should I hire you? A lot of people fumble. But then I asked them a question about IoT or some, some technical stuff. They're very good. But then I asked them a question, why should I hire you? And they struggle. So they are not able to articulate their value prop. We talked about stage product development. Okay. Starting with the POC. Most of you have done physics lab, chemistry lab, small, small, you know, and that's a POC. And you are in an electrical lab, civil lab, e antra lab, this lab, that lab. And what happens is that, you know, you do a POC, but that's not something which is a prototype. It's just a proof of concept that you're doing in a lab. When it starts working, which means that you are not, you don't have to make it work. It's not that the students is doing it a physics experiment or electrical engineering or e-anta toolkit. It is when your customer can do it and use it, then you have a prototype. And then you get into something which is a minimal viable product, which means it's a product which is working and the customer can say, oh, I like it, I don't like it. And then you have to start thinking about production. I think the challenge is many of you have not, you can't even dream how big production can be. I showed you some pictures last time, but I'd encourage each of you to do industrial training. I don't know whether IT offers industrial training, but if you're doing a startup, I would encourage you to go and visit either a factory where you see a big plant, an automobile plant, or a heavy engineering plant, or you go and see, you know, Infosys, Cognizant, or any of the back offices. But when you go there and see the back office of Infosys or Google or whatever, wherever you're going for a job, don't go there and say, okay, this is the place that I want to sit in because I want to be an employee. If you want to think like an entrepreneur, you have to start thinking, how do I hire all of these people? You have to think, how do I, in my company, set up this call center with 10,000 people or a software developer? Don't go there and think like a coder. There are 30 million coders in the world, 30 million coders. But if you're an entrepreneur, you should go and think, how do I create up an office where I recruit 100, 200, 300? And you heard Kalpit. He's got a team of 40 or 50 people. He's barely out of college. He just passed out last year, right? He's already hired those people. So you have to think about production level. Production level in the factory or production level with people where you're hiring and setting up a call center. So to think big. This is the worksheet number five. Remember how it works. So you start okay with your target customer. What are your current options? What are the current unmet needs? So if DRF, I, I think I see Shant and I think Nidhi is also there probably. But you know, who is your target customer? What are the current options? Because everybody has option. And what are the needs that's not being met? And therefore, what is the value proposition that will create? But in doing that, you have to define how you're better, faster, cheaper, or more satisfying. And you have to have tons of confidence. You have to fill up the sheet. But once you do that, then you get into the next sheet, which is solution design. So once you've defined your value prop and how will you be better, cheaper, faster, then you work backwards to say, what does my solution feel like, work like, look like? And then you have to start creating pictures, web pages, data sheets, and prototypes, the first prototype. And for a first prototype, for a donor office can be by pitch. My first pitch. How is this pitch different? I mean, you know, Bombay Alumni Association yesterday had a big 
hookla at, at Geo. But the, all the Bombay Alumni Association who attended the hookla in Geo World yesterday, they are also being approached by many other, you know, clubs and people who are seeking donation, etc. How are you different? So this is, you start with the customer, go right to defining your value proposition. Once you've got value proposition, you come left to define your solution. All right. So this is still a reca recap. What I'm now going to do is a little bit of the class today, which is branding. Typically, techni technical people don't think branding. But remember that people don't buy products, really. Okay, all of you are wearing a t-shirt. I see the gentleman on the left, you know, yellow. And then I see a gentleman on the left who's wearing a red, white, and a blue t-shirt on the left that I see. You have bought it because, you know, there's probably a name to it. I bought this t-shirt because it's a Burberry t-shirt. It's my favorite brand. Okay. So all of you like it or not are actually not buying products. You are actually buying brands. When you choose that I'm coming to IIT Bombay, you're not buying the physical features of IIT Bombay, the hostel room of IIT Bombay. You're not buying the classroom of IIT Bombay. Okay. You are, you are buying something which is an aggregate called IIT Bombay. So let's look at what those aggregates are. So today's lecture is about branding. So what is a brand? So we will deep dive into a brand. A brand that in its simplicity, okay, is a name or a term or a sign or a symbol which distinguish a product from a product from other products. Remember, every product is commoditized. There are many kinds of soaps. A soap is a soap is a soap. But you still buy a particular kind of soap. There are 40 lakh engineering students right now in India. 40 lakh, 4 million, you know. And right now, there were 200,000 IITians. So technically, an ITN is an ITN is an ITN for the recruiter. Technically, a t-shirt is a t-shirt is a t-shirt. A phone is a phone is a phone. Hostel is a hostel is a hostel. How do you differentiate it? What's the difference between hostel 4, age 4 and age 5? End of the day, the hostels are the same. But still, some of you will feel good about age 4 and not so good about maybe age 17. Okay. So brand is a name. So the, the branding start thing started 600 years back. So... It started by someone who was selling beer. So the first brand in history is actually a beer brand. A beer is a beer is a beer. I mean, nobody can differentiate between a beer and a beer. Those of, I don't know how many of you drink. Okay. If any of you drink, if I don't tell you which beer, you will not be able to make out the difference. But 600 years back, 1366, okay. In 1366, someone branded this beer and started calling it Stella Artois. And the first brand was created. Now, a soap is a soap is a soap. What's the difference between a soap and a soap? Real. But then a company called Procter & Gamble, which almost invented marketing, created something which is called a pure soap. So they started advertising a soap, which is called ivory soap. And that ivory soap, okay, was actually, they sold it as pure. Remember, soap were made by tallow. You know, when, when they killed a lot of the cattle, the cows, a lot of tallow was left over, which is a fat. And from the fat, they made candles. And you could from the, if you mix some surfactants, it became a soap. So you could wash your hands and your body with it. But the problem with all of that was that it was not very pure. It was fat mixed with surfactants. So Procter & Gamble, okay, sometime in 1850s, came up and said, oh, we are making it very pure and therefore it's a pure soap and it is so pure that it floats. So the first brand Procter & Gamble launched was Ivory Soap. Okay, That's how, because a soap is a soap is a soap. As a tidbit, they started advertising it through what is called TV advertisement. And those advertisement, and they were sponsoring small, small shows, and they were called soap opera. And that's how today, if you look at any TV, whether, whether it's IPL or any of the any of the serials that you watch, or if you're doing OTT, Madam said you're doing a binge watch, right? When you're doing Netflix or something, normally an ad will pop up, Prime Video, etc. unless you have ad free. You keep me in fact. So, those things are called soap opera because Procter & Gamble used that to advertise his soap, starting with ivory. That's why it's called soap opera, the small TV, which all of you watch. So that's how a brand was born, to differentiate between your product versus all other product. Over time, over time, products which had a brand became very valuable. And I'll show you how it became valuable because people try to buy brands, okay, which promise certain things. And those sold more and they're more profitable and they had higher prices. And therefore, it led to extra profits for the company. And therefore, there's a methodology to value the brand. So let's see if e is the brand, which Professor Kavi and the team has been building for 10 years. 
what is the value of the brand how valuable is the brand called eantra does it have any have any value or is it you know just another competition so if you look at the value of the brands this is 2020 the most valuable brand in the world is amazon which is which is valued in 2020 right now it is even more i think it's double at about 300 300 billion dollars huh? 300 billion dollars the value of the brand not the not the profit not the profit, not the market capital, just the value of the brand. Okay. Because Amazon is Amazon, Microsoft is Microsoft, Google is Google, Toyota is Toyota. Okay. So if you look at Toyota, a car is a car is a car. What's the difference really? I mean, you know, what's the difference between two cars? But because it's a Toyota car, people buy a Toyota car because people associate certain things. I'm going to show you what it means. Okay. And therefore you, you can command extra prices and you get higher shares. Similarly, in, in you know, Virat Kohli is a brand. Dhoni is a brand. Anushka Sharma is a brand. Virat Kohli and Anushka Sharma together is called Virushka, which is a brand. If I go and say, okay, make me an advertiser, end of the day, I can, you know, I can act maybe as, I mean, you know, Virat Kohli is not an actor. Any of you can probably act as well as Virat Kohli can, but nobody will pay you advertising dollars because Virat Kohli is a brand and he, he can command a hundred crores for an advertisement. You and I can't. So that's called the brand. In India, remember, the global brands, Amazon, in 2020 was 300 billion dollars plus now it's about 600 billion dollars the biggest brand in india is 20 billion dollars then it's starter group we start everybody trust starter and so on Re lic reliance those are the brand values and that is where when you become a brand if you're an itn and an itn and an itn all right you're an itn great super but now right now there are 200,000 itns across 24 ieds what's your brand value why will a recruiter hire you ahead of 200,000 other ITRs. And it and trust me, it's not just about CPI or your department or your institute even. Trust me, I'll guarantee you that because I, I, I recruit myself. So if you look at the brand, so there are certain things which build up to the brand. One is the product, but I'm not going to go into details. You'll find there's a lot of attributes for the brand. For example, what is the guarantee and the warranty? What are the add-ons? So if you look at the Apple brand, it's not just you buying the phone. Okay, you're buying the whole ecosystem, which is the earphone, the music, the iTunes, and so on and so forth. All of this creates a brand. And then the other thing that you have to do, think about is how is the brand positioned? So if you look at the brand of cars, you can be high quality and high cost, or it could be low quality and low cost. And that's a dilemma which everybody faces. For example, if I want to take a donation from someone for a center, if how much will MIT charge? I mean, if MIT gives you, gives away the naming rights, for a center, how much will they charge versus IIT versus NIT? What will be the enrollment fee for Yantra? Is it 500, 1000, 10,000? So am I a high quality, high cost brand or am I a low quality mass brand? And if you look at some of the Chinese brands and all, Kia and all, they're low end. But if you look at Mercedes, Aston Martin, Audi, they're high cost, high quality. You have to decide that. So if you look at Apple, Apple pays absolutely on the top right side, high quality, high brand. And that's why they're a two trillion dollar brand. It's not that Apple is the highest selling brand. So this chart, and it will be there for you to look at up later on. Okay. It's not that the highest sellers are Apple phones. So if you look at the blue line, actually Samsung is the, in that year, Samsung was the highest selling. Apple is actually much lower in terms of volumes. It's 12% and Samsung is at 21% couple of years back. So Samsung sells double the number of phones Apple sells. But if you look at the profits, the black line is Apple. And what it basically says is Apple gets 70% of the total profits that the smartphone market gives. So it doesn't sell as many phones, but it's a premium product. And I'll explain to you how they do it. And part of it is the way the phone is, but part of it also the way that they advertise the phone. Okay, Kalpit talked to you about advertising and he talked to you about, you know, if you have to learn one thing, to be an entrepreneur, you have to learn marketing. That's what he said. You have to learn the market and you have to learn marketing. If you have to learn anything in terms of growing yourself, growing your business, please learn marketing. You can learn all the analytics and all and you get you a job, but it will not be able to grow yourself or grow your business as well. Otherwise, you're just working hard. And there are many kinds of marketing. I'm not going to talk about all the types of marketing today. I'm just giving you a flavor. It could be content, social, pay-per-click, search engine. It could be radio, TV, mobile, viral, hacking, growth hacking, and so on. So let's look at how Apple Apple markets itself. Okay. So I'll come back to Apple because I'll show you some advertising of Apple. Okay. See, the best marketeers don't market their product at all. They don't even talk about the product. So if you look at Nike, Nike doesn't talk about shoes at all. A shoe is a shoe is a shoe. There's not much of a difference between a Nike shoe 
or Adidas shoe or the Reebok shoe. Yet Nike is highly profitable, highly valued because they don't sell shoes at all. Nike doesn't sell shoes. Nike sells an attitude which is called athleticism. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you some examples. Let me finish the story, then I'll show you some examples. Walmart doesn't sell products. Walmart basically sells savings. It's like DMART in India. Every day you save money. And with the money that you save, you can do other things. So Walmart doesn't sell soaps or shampoos or anything. They said, if you come to us, you can save money. The money that you save, you can live better. That's all that they do. They sell savings. They don't send money. Coca-Cola, end of the day, it's basically sugar and caffeine. Okay. But they don't sell sugar and caffeine. It, they, it, nobody says, oh, Coca-Cola is the world's largest selling sugar and caffeine drink. They don't sell that. They sell happiness. Because when you feel Coke, actually the sugar and the caffeine makes you feel good. But the way they position it is, you open happiness. Open a Coke, open happiness. They sell you happiness. Mercedes-Benz doesn't sell a car. Because a car is a car is a car. They sell the best cars. That's how they position themselves. If you want the best, buy a Mercedes. By the way, BMW doesn't sell the best. It sells the best driving experience. It doesn't sell the best car. It sells the best car to drive, the driving pleasure. But nobody sells an engine or, you know, here's my engine and here's my gear and here's my seat and all of that. They sell the best. And people who buy Mercedes are the people who want the best. People who want buy a BMW, subconsciously are people who want to drive and enjoy driving. Pampers, those of you are mothers, essentially the baby doesn't buy Pampers. Because it's a baby, right? But what it does is it sells to the mother. Because if you wear pampers, which is a diaper, the baby can sleep well and the mother can also sleep well. So basically selling to the mother that if you put in pampers, the baby will not wake you up at night. So you can love your baby because the baby is more comfortable. You can sleep and you can play with your baby without changing diapers or worry about, you know, wet panties and so on and so forth. That's what they sell. Gillette. Gillette doesn't sell razors. Gillette sells good looking man of course nowadays gillette sales have come down because you know virat kohli and the anti india team they're all wearing you know bears so actually gillette sales have come down but as long as you know the handsome man is seen as a clean shaven man gillette got the market but now with this bearded look uh, gillette sales have actually come down but gillette doesn't sell a razor it sells a handsome man the best a man can get. Geo has just announced 5G today and Geo wants to capture your digital life. It gives you connectivity and it gives you the, everything that you want on your phone. So it's basically tied up with all the content providers, Meta, Google, I think Microsoft also, they've, tied, they've just tied up with Qualcomm for the 5G. So basically they want to take charge of your digital life, phone, connectivity, content, social media, everything, the whole works. Remember Meta, sell social media, social connection. Google sells search, knowledge, and Android. Microsoft sells productivity. Your thing will sell you, give you everything. OTT, you know, Netflix sells OTT. Amazon sells e-commerce. Geo sells will give you everything, digital life. I've just, today they have announced, Mr. Mukesh Ambani have announced 5G. TCS, those of you will go for a job. Experience certainty is that it's reliable. If you work with TCS, okay, you will not struggle with breakdowns and outages. State bank, banker to every Indian. Even if you're poor, if you're if, if you're in a rural village, you are still selling, you know, banker to every Indian. Now, advertising can, can also be misused. And in the early days, actually advertising was also wrongly used. So cigarettes, today we know that cigarettes can cause cancer, right? But when cigarettes were first launched, look at how cigarettes were advertised. It was advertised as Doctors smoke cigarettes. Uh, this particular brand called Camels. It's an American brand. So if the doctors are smoking Camels, everybody assumes it must be safe. It must be okay to smoke. And that's how a lot of people, a lot of women especially, became smokers. This was targeted at women. Okay. So this is, today we know that smoking causes cancer. The way the Marlboro man okay, was supposed to be really the ultimate man, the tough, macho, manly man, not a wimp of a man, you know, not a man who's so shy and so, you know, that's how they created an image of a manly man. Today, of course, the image is gone because A, everybody knows that cigarettes cause cancer. And also, I think society has evolved. So not the definition of a manly man is it's not just manly man. We're also looking at other kinds of men, sensitive man, metrosexual man, even LGBT man, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I think society has evolved, but in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, okay, the manly man smoked Marlboro. By the way, this famous model himself died of cancer. 
lung cancer. But he advertised it and it drove generations of people to smoke. So this is the power of advertising. There's also something which is called surrogate advertising. So sometimes the law doesn't allow you to advertise alcohol and cigarettes and anything which is harmful. So what companies have done, they have not. So if so, Bacardi is a is a rum, right? And they've got other brands. So they don't actually advertise the Bacardi rum or any of those alcohol brands. They what is called surrogate advertising. So here they're advertising music CDs. But everybody actually are advertising the cigarettes. So you'll find some whiskey brands are advertising water. You will find the Kingfisher, okay, bought a cricket team to advertise Kingfisher, to make the money on the Kingfisher, okay. And it's still called that Royal Bangalore, Bangalore Royals was actually sponsored by Kingfisher, basically to highlight, you know, the beer brands. So this is IT. IT is also a brand, okay. So I just want to do a little bit of, because I've lectured a lot. Okay, and I've talked a lot, so I want to stop a little bit here. And I just want to ask a few questions to those who are here, that when you hear the IIT brand, what comes to your mind? What is the IIT brand? IIT Bombay, what is it? Just just all the toppers go there, you know, CS is all 1 to 60 and then it closes, 1 to 1000. What is the attribute of the IIT brand? This is These are the attributes of a brand. Remember, IIT is a service brand. Okay, IIT is a service brand. It's not a product brand. But if you have to look at some of these, what is the attributes of an IIT brand? And then I'll go to the Yantra and ask them, what is the attributes of the Yantra brand? Either you can also go. Anybody can say, I mean, all of your ITs, what are the IIT brands? What are the attributes of an IIT brand? Is there a guarantee or a warranty? Is a guarantee I get a job? If I'm in IIT, I get a job. Is that what makes the IIT brand? What are the key features of IIT brand? It is the top university, I mean, the top engineering college. How? Prove it. So it's rank, says it, I think. The rank is only four, four or five criteria. And remember, before the ranking came, this global ranking is hardly a few years old, right? But IT Bombay as a brand is 60 years old. So don't go by the branding, which is 10 years or maybe five or 10 years. It became popular a few years. NIRF ranking only came a few years back. Also, okay. So what makes the brand? Is it price that it is cheap? It's it's cheap to study here no the top uh, je rankers uh, come to iit bombay okay what else so so the quality of the students as well as the research done here is you know really valued of okay also iit b alums who have done really great in life so that also sets a good example of uh, you know what what good work the okay the alums are doing yes okay what else what are the physical attributes of the product? I mean, IT is not just the students and the jobs that you get in the research that you generate. It is also the whole campus, the whole, you know, the hostels, the classes, the faculty, the classroom that you're sitting in. Okay, like as uh, perceived by the outsiders, the IIT, the, the moment they uh, think about IIT, they think about the corrosive package. Okay, so let me flip the question, okay? IIT, because Nidhi talked about IIT being a ranker in the, in the, we are still 188. I think we are at 180s, right? Why is MIT one? Why is Oxford in the top 10? Why is Harvard in the top 10? Because of the culture. I mean, MIT is a very small camp. I mean, Harvard is a very small campus. It's not even as big as, as our, our, our this campus is. Okay. So where is the difference? They also get good students. Our students are as good as their students. There's, you know, IT students are as good as, MIT students, because many IT students go to MIT or Stanford. Where's the difference? Kind of facilities, infrastructure. Okay. So if you're a counsel to the, let's say the management. Okay. I'll go to the right side of the class. Okay. Um, I see some students sitting behind Professor Kavi. Okay. Well, what would be your counsel? I mean, uh, I mean, let me ask Jasper. He's from DTU. Okay. DTU is a brand. IT is a brand. I don't know what the global rankings are. What's the difference in terms of this format? There's no right or wrong. I'm just making you think. Okay, I'm just making you think. Remember that. This is an academic discussion. I think IIT might have a more powerful brand, at least in India, compared to the brand that DTU has in Denmark. Um, I don't think universities have the same brand in Denmark compared to India, maybe. So what brought you here? Uh, I wanted to visit India. No, I, th I well, what I'm saying, I think IIT has a very great brand and I don't think DTU has the same brand. It's just a university kind of. Okay, so so I would just ask the next question. See, 
it's very easy to say IIT is the best. IIT Bombay is the best. Okay, very easy to say that. My question is, let's not look at IIT Bombay within India. Okay, what does MIT have that IIT Bombay doesn't have in terms of brand? If you ask anybody, any students, I think everybody will say MIT is a bigger brand than IIT. The donors will say that. The recruiters will say that. The students will say that. So why is the brand called MIT perceived to be? And MIT is much more expensive. You know that the tuition fees. Of MIT is much much more very expensive. We have also got IIT Bombay School of Management. There is Harvard out there. Why does Harvard have a bigger brand name than a school of Mumbai, uh, a school of management in IIT Bombay? Harvard, MIT also has Martin Trust Center, which is like our DS School of Entrepreneurship. So you get the point. So the question is, you have to start thinking. Okay, and it's just that it's not about the name. There has to you have to design the brand in a way. Okay, where all of it totally becomes a brand. Now, of course, there can be you can take pieces of it and do a ranking, which is what NIRF and some of these other guys do. This QS ranking and global ranking, etc. But building a brand is tough. Let me come to the Yantra group, but Burgess. How do you define the Yantra? Remember, Yantra is also a service brand. So, how do you define Yantra brand? And remember, the next question that I'll ask you is: Yantra started ten years back. Coursera started ten years. Okay, edX started ten years back. Spoken English started ten years back. NPTEL started ten years. Back. Okay, these are all brands. They're known as brands. Okay, so as a rhetorical question, what is the difference between a ten-year brand called Eantra and a ten-year-old brand, ten, eleven-year brand called Coursera? Coursera listed in the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, at about a four billion dollar valuation. Four billion dollar. Okay, edX was sold by Harvard. Edex was started by MIT and Harvard. Last year, they sold it to private equity at eight hundred million dollars. Eight hundred million dollars. So, where does I mean is Yantra a great brand? Of course, it's a great brand. Is IIT Bombay a great brand? Of course, it's a great brand. But you have to compare it, right? You have to the best of the best always have a choice. The best students in Germany or France or England or US or anywhere they have a choice. Just like. any indian indian customer has a choice to buy a tata car or a toyota car the best students in the world in japan in korea in singapore in hong kong in china in france in europe they have a choice to go to mit or harvard or come to iit and i they have a choice the best of the best so just to make you reflect why is it that coursera 10 years back Bad brand IPO at four billion dollar. Why is it that ten-year-old brand called edX sold at eight hundred million dollar? What is it they have that Eantra doesn't have? And what can we do to build the Eantra brand in the next three four years so it becomes as big and as powerful as Coursera? Why not? You get the point. So I'm making you reflect. You don't have to answer. This is how brand marketers think, okay. and what happens is that most people are not trained to think like that. Not everybody is trained to think like that, okay. and a lot of people go and try and sell the features okay. and the features of the brand. But remember, most of you will make a mistake that my product is my features. You will forget that it's a huge amount of tangible and non-tangible stuff. There are at least fifty or sixty attributes of a brand. And a good brand manager, uh, you know, some some of the best brand managers manage their brand almost like human beings. They manage it. Generations of brand managers, generations. PNG is 150 years old. It's been every brand Ivory has been managed by 50 generations of brand managers. Okay, and they have managed it. I don't know how well they're managing the IIT brand itself. It's evolved to be the best in India, but it's a long way to go versus the global best. And that's why you don't have French students, German students, Russian students. American students coming to IIT, but they're going to MIT or Harvard, or Stanford. They're not coming here. Jasper is an exception. So now, let me give you some examples of how exactly Apple. Okay, Apple. The, I told you already that these guys don't sell products. So Eantra should not even sell a competition or robotics. And those are features. Apple sells is a two trillion dollar market cap company. I think it's now you know going more than that. They don't even sell a phone. Nike doesn't sell a shoe. Walmart doesn't sell soap, shampoos, essentials, nothing. They sell something which is much beyond a soap or a shampoo. And my guess to each, my request to each of you is, when you line up for an interview, or you try and sell your uh, your your this thing, don't go and sell. You know, I am CS, 
I am f- first year CS, fourth year CS. My CPI is so much. I was stopper here in what? I was the you know o- ESL manager in you know I was OC in ESL. I was this Abudhay club, this thing, and come up with a huge amount of features. So my bio data is full of what is called POR points of you know positions of responsibility. My bio data is full of resume points. Recruiters actually don't look. I've recruited. Don't look at that. So how do you sell? How do you sell? What is the biggest? So you have to go through all the steps of creating and defining your value proposition. Otherwise, there are two hundred thousand ITRs. Shades of difference. There are another five hundred thousand and ITRs. Shades of difference. Okay. So now let me just show you how Apple got to. Okay. Um, how Apple actually sells. They never sell a phone. Okay. Nike doesn't sell shoes. So um, the best, the person who actually is a brilliant marketer is Steve Jobs. If you want to learn marketing, either you go and join P&G or any of the good companies like Unilever or whoever best marketer, or you really study Steve Jobs. He is an absolute genius in marketing. Okay. Now there is a video I'm going to play you. Listen to this video over and over and over again. Listen carefully. There is there is a lot of subtitles, and you'll see exactly how he says. To me, marketing is about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world, and we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is, and so we have to be. Really clear. To me, marketing is about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world, and we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is, and so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. Now, Apple, fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world, right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony. It is one of the greats of the greats, not just in this country but all around the globe. And but 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 even a great brand needs investment and caring if it's going to retain its relevance and vitality. And the Apple brand has clearly suffered from neglect. In this area, in the last few years, and we need to bring it back. The way to do that is not to talk about speeds and fees. It's not to talk about nits and megahertz. It's not to talk about why we're better than Windows. The dairy industry tried for 20 years to convince you that milk was good for you. It's a lie, but they tried anyway, and <laughs> the sales were going like this. And then they tried Got Milk, and the sales are going like this. Got Milk doesn't even talk about the product. Matter of fact, it focuses on the absence of the product. <laughs> but, but, but the best example of all, and and one of the greatest jobs of of marketing in the if the universe has ever seen is Nike. Remember, Nike sells a commodity. They sell shoes, and yet when you think of Nike, you feel something different than a shoe company. In their ads, as you know, they don't ever talk about the product. They don't ever tell you about their air soles and why they're better than Reebok's air soles. What does Nike do in their advertising? They they honor great athletes and they honor great athletics. That's who they are. That's what they are about. Apple spends a fortune on advertising. You'd never know it. You'd never know it. So. When I got here, we, Apple just fired their agency. We're doing a competition with 23 agencies that, you know, four years from now would pick one, and we blew that up, and we <clears throat> we hired Shy Day, the ad agency that I was fortunate enough to work with years ago. We created some award-winning work, including the, the commercial voted the best ad ever made in 1984 by advertising professionals, and um, we started working about eight weeks ago. And what we, the question we asked was, our customers want to know who is Apple and what is it that we stand for. 
where do we fit in this world? And what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their jobs done, although we do that well. We do that better than almost anybody in some cases. But Apple's about something more than that. Apple, at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. That's what we believe. And we've had the opportunity to work with people like that. We've had an opportunity to work with people like you, with software developers, with customers who have done it in some big and some small ways. And we believe that in this world. People can change it for the better. And that those people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that actually do. And so what we're going to do in our first brand marketing campaign in several years is to, is to get back to that core value. A lot of things have changed. The market's a totally different place than it was a decade ago. And Apple's totally different, and Apple's place in it is totally different. And believe me, the products and the distribution strategies and the manufacturing are totally different, and we understand that. But values and core values, those things shouldn't change. The things that Apple believed in at its core are the same things that Apple really stands for today. And so we wanted to find a way to communicate this. And what we have is something that I am um, I am very moved by. It honors those people who have changed the world. Some of them are living, some of them are not. But the ones that aren't, as you'll see, you know that if they'd ever used the computer, it would have been a Mac. <laughs> and <clears throat> the theme of the campaign is, is think different. It's the people honoring the people who think different and who move this world forward. And it's it is what we are about. It touches the soul of this company. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it, uh, and I hope that you feel the same way about it. I do. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. Not the only thing you can't do is ignore them. They change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So what do you think? Remember, Apple... If, if you look at when Apple took off, Apple almost died, right? All of you know that. Okay, because they're selling, the problem is they were selling boxes. Okay, they're, they're, they're selling boxes. But Apple took off. So if you look at it, this is where Apple actually started taking off. But they never took off because they're selling boxes. Or like Steve Jobs said, that they're selling, they're selling bits and softwares and so on. And when you see a resume, as a recruiter, lots and lots of PR and biodata value and all of that. And most of the good recruiters, they look at, okay, where's the core value? So the question you have to ask yourself in your personal life or in your startup is what is the core value, which is thing different? I showed it to you. That's, so, you know, if you look at um, the, the, strat the brilliance of Steve Jobs strategy, by definition, they don't want people who buy mass market. If, if you're buying Windows or if you're buying Samsung and if you're buying, you know, this or that, they don't want to. You're not the target customer. They just want someone 
who is the best, the best photographer. So Apple provides the best photography, the best musician who loves music. Therefore, Apple provides the best AirPods and the iTunes. People who use the most publisher, therefore the iMac or the graphic design. If you want just, you know, just one out of many, they are, you're not the target customer. They don't care. They don't want you as a customer. So the key question becomes, what, will, what does your startup stand for? What do you stand for? Let's look at the Nike ad. Okay. Like I said, Nike doesn't sell shoes. Nike honors athleticism and athletics. So when you're wearing a Nike, you know, you buy a new Nike, you go for, you know, you go for a morning run. Maybe some of you may be running three, four miles or three, four kilometers in the morning. I hope all of you do. But you buy a new Nike and you put on your new Nike and you say, okay, normally I'm running four kilometers. Today I'm feeling so good with my new Nike. I'll probably go for a six kilometer run. If I'm doing a sprint, 100 meters in like 13 seconds, whatever it is, 14, 15 seconds. Okay. Today I'm wearing a new Nike. Let's see if we can shave off half a second or one second. But if you're playing footer with a new, you know, new, new boots or something, and you say, okay, today, Arsto, today I have to score a goal because I feel so good. That's what Nike is all about. Way behind on the harsh Queen K Highway in the world of the physically challenged, Sarah Reinertsen has words of good cheer. Nice work, She's on a mission she said she would undertake the moment her Ironman of a year ago had to be painfully ended when she missed the cutoff time. She's tough for a reason. My parents always treated me like any other kid. And uh, when I fell, my mom didn't always rush up to me to pick me up. Sarah's going to pick herself up. It was a really important lesson for me to learn that. Sarah was raised to hear the word can't and say, excuse me? But when she reached the end of the bike portion of the race last year, she had taken too long and was hearing that exact word. Knowing her spirit and her heart were still strong, she fixed the one thing she could. I'm really excited about my new bike, my new ride. It's a custom frame. I went out to the Cannondale factory and they measured me for a custom bike, so it's a different geometry and it fits me so much better. I am much more proportioned on it, I can control the frame better, it's so much lighter. I find that when I'm climbing hills I'm able to climb faster. Uh, they did a really hot new paint job on it and uh, it's got my name on it and we also on the seat tube uh, it says unfinished business and so it's really been about the unfinished business I ha have here on this island. To cross that finish line I mean really it's it's history in the making I mean no woman's done what what I've attempted to do. Day to day I live a pretty ordinary life and I think we all want to do something extraordinary. And um, for me, when I cross that finish line, I know that I will have done something extraordinary. So this was the Nike video. What you're now going to see is the first iPod video. iPod, a thousand songs in your pocket. Remember, this is when iPod was launched, huh? 2000. And then iPhone came. And today, of course, it's history. One that I'm trying to make is, does, like Steve Jobs said, does Apple make the best boxes and the best devices? Of course it does. But so does many others. 
anybody can make another another iPhone. I mean, Samsung does, OnePlus does, Vivo does, Oppo does. They're all good phones. Yet Apple gets 90% or 80% of the profits, the entire profits in the world. So are IITians good? Of course they are. Are IIT Bombay, everybody is a star? Of course they are a star. Is IIT Bombay a top 200 college? Of course it is a top 200 college. But only the boxes and the bits and the megahertz and the chips do not make Apple a $2 trillion company, market cap company. And only the features of IIT Bombay will not make IIT Bombay the best in the world. We already have the best students. We already have very, very good faculty. We've already got good labs. Yet, we are not number one. DRF, if we're raising money, are we raising money? Of course. Every time I see in, in, in you know, we're raising money, which is funding a lab. We're, there's groundbreaking happening. But are we raising as much money as, or are, are we getting as much, as many endowments as MIT is getting, Harvard is getting, Princeton is getting, Cornell is getting, Stanford is getting, Texas A&M is getting. Harvard has got $40 billion of endowment, $40 billion. Of course, it's 400-year-old college. So there's a good, there's a big difference between good and the best. Are IIT Bombay, is IIT Bombay good? Of course it is. It's the best in India, but it's not the best in the world. Is DRF doing a good job? Of course, it's doing a brilliant job. My, my credit to you know, everybody who is doing all of this work. But are we where, you know, do we have a billion dollar, $2 billion in endowments? Probably not. Is Yantra a good brand? Of course it's a good brand. Has it trained people? Of course it has trained people. Two lakh, two lakh, 200,000 people. But Coursera, which started, has got 11, 110 million learners. So is there something that can be done more than 200,000? Does, can anybody in this room, the, all the, People that I'm seeing sitting behind Professor Kavi, the lady sitting on the side of this thing. What makes you stand out from 200,000 other ITNs? Is it the features, which is the resume points, or is it a core value, which nobody else has? Okay, that's what branding is all about. This is what makes for a great brand. And you cannot build your startup and you cannot build your career with. Um, now, how do you create a brand? How do you create something called a minimum viable brand? How does the answer create a minimum viable brand? DRF create a brand or IT create, or you yourself create your personal brand. There are many tools, okay? And you can get started tonight. So, you know, they're free logo creators. You have, and the logo for you, okay, can be your LinkedIn profile. You heard Kalpit, your LinkedIn profile, your, you know, or your website. Do you have a website in your name? Have you created it, populated it? Do you have a social media handle? How many followers do you have? Are you a thought leader? So your logo can be a picture or a brand with a tagline, and it could be populated on YouTube, a few videos on YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok. In fact, your profile on, on Tinder or any of the dating sites. Okay. Have you created that? There are lots of free websites. You can build a website in one hour's time. If you book your domain name, if your, if your name, so Burgess Driver, I would strongly urge Burgess Driver to book the domain called Burgess or bdriver or burgessdriver.com, .in, .whatever. And then populate it. So it becomes a presence. And the Burgess Driver, your, your identity in terms of, you know, your online digital identity. If you're building a software, there are a lot of free wireframing softwares. And you can build your, you know, you can wireframe a whole new Yantra tonight. By dinner time, you can create a wireframe. By dinner time, you can create a website. By dinner time, you can, co you can, you can book a website called Ajit Harpure on Nishan Malu and start creating your online brand. You can popularize yourself or your startup tonight with this free search engine optimization tools. So you start keep going up, but you cannot do any of these still till you have defined your core value. What does Burgess stand for? What is the core value? What does the answer stay for? What, what does, you know, any of your startup stand for? You can do it tonight. Your WhatsApp number. Tonight, you can uh, you can convert it into a business account and start advertising your stuff. The last thing I'd leave it for is what is called an elevator speech. All of you should have a 15-second speech about yourself and your startup. So if you meet your director and the director asks, you know, hey, how are you? Who's, what are you doing? You have an elevator speech. If you bump into Mr. Modi in an industry forum and just happen to help shake and say, Mr. Modi asks you, hey, what do you 
you know, what do you do? You should be able to say in 15 seconds who you are and the most powerful value proposition that you have. If you meet an investor, if you meet a media person, if you meet your girlfriend, boyfriend, your whoever, you know, and they ask, hey, who are you? I mean, what are you doing? You should have an elevator speech in 15 seconds. So I've got some templates in 15 seconds, 20 seconds is there. And you can, you can use this for your defining yourself. So for example, given, you know, I am David. I specialize in creating a highly engaging web application. My passion is helping companies exponentially grow their customer. And then there's an, a call to action. I'll be happy to call you tomorrow. So, you know, the, you, all of you are sitting on a verge of transforming your lives. So you can treat this class as a boring class, a PowerPoint class is a theory class, or you can treat this class as somehow you transform your lives. I think in each of my classes, at least one person has transformed. You saw Palpit, the previous class had Aman, Soham, and five or six others, previous class and some more. And I think each of you should be able to transform your lives, yourself. All right, but guys, I, I again will ask you to become externally focused. Okay, my key message is external focus, become aware of the world, transform your lives. And in the process, you'll make a lot of money. Trust me, like Kalpit. Trust me, the amount of money he's making, I think you can do the maths. If his ticket size is 8,000, and if he's selling to 10,000, I think he did not give any revenue figures, but if he's got 10,000 um, followers, and if he's selling at $100, um, I think he's selling at whatever, $100, yeah, $100. And if he's got 10,000, you can gauge your revenue. And then to get his valuation, you have to multiply it by about 10 to 15. You can do the maths of how many million dollars the valuation is. It's just one year out of college. Okay? You know, we have been talking of customer discovery. You need to finish it. If I had had time, I would have given a personal example. But think of it like selling a ticket. Okay, The sooner you sell it, the sooner you will reach your goal. And Kalpit was a true inspiration. You know, I'm so much older. I am an uh, associate professor, but I was inspired by his stories. Very smart, had the numbers. You know, he knew what he was doing. And you need to start doing that for your teams and for your startups. So that's it for today.